Okay, it's Tuesday again, and it's 6 o'clock, and this is Truth Attack with Tyra and Tolik, where religion, politics, and the law are mentioned all in one breath. You won't be able to uh, dial in today because I have a special person with me here that I'm going to interview, but you can listen to the show when it gets uploaded on YouTube, and then you can contact this special person and pick his brain about his platform. This is the Reverend Scott Copeland, and he is another of the Constitution Party's presidential candidates, and I welcome you to the show. Well, thank you for having me and asking me to be on. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. I wanted to have all the Constitution Party um, candidates on the show so that people will get to know not only you, but the Constitution Party as a whole, because I believe that um, of all the parties out there that I'm familiar with, I really like the Constitution Party. Um, I would like for you to talk about yourself for a little bit here, you know, so that the people that are listening will get to know you, where you come from, how you got here from there, all those types of things. So take a few minutes just to introduce yourself. Okay. Well, uh, as you said, my name is Scott Copeland, and you can find a lot of my bio at scottcopelandusa.com. And, uh, but back in, uh, in my younger childhood years, my parents pulled me out of public education in Jackson, Mississippi, and put me into a private uh, Baptist academy school called Woodland Hills Baptist Academy. It's since uh, closed its doors, unfortunately. But I also attended, uh, after graduating from Woodland Hills, I attended Hines Community College and uh, found myself there for a number of years taking vocational, technical, and academic classes of all of a variety. And I attended uh, from 1991 to 1996 uh, Mississippi College, where I graduated with my bachelor's and my minor in public relations. And then I left and went, uh, me and my family went to Fort Worth, Texas, to so I could attend uh, Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary there. And uh, in the course of that, just felt God calling me to a church. I continued my seminary studies, but um, in 1998, I believe it was, uh, someone asked me about uh, the old Baptist General Convention in Texas and, you know, what was going on between it and the Southern Baptist Convention nationally. And I produced for them, gave them some uh, materials from uh, all sides of the spectrum, and they produced a a ballot of based on theology and and their convictions that they would um, um, they produced a little ballot for the church to vote by, and some of the issues that it was dealing with was that. Um, some of the missionary money that was being sent to the old Baptist General Convention was going to Planned Parenthood, and it was also going uh, in support of the old convention uh, leadership. Was in, unfortunately, it was in the uh, conviction that homosexuality was an okay thing for uh, churches to ordain active uh, practicing homosexuals. And so uh, as far as our church, we were one of the uh, ones that left the old Baptist convention. Uh, we were threatened. Our lives were threatened by people. Uh, we even had some come to the church, threatened to burn the church down. Um, you know, and so it's, it's, it was a, 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 an interesting time, to say the very least. And um, it introduced me to just how vicious... Uh, the people can can become. Um, uh, then uh, later on, uh, I helped start and form uh, what's now called the Southern Baptist of Texas Convention. I believe it has somewhere in the neighborhood of like 17 affiliated churches here in Texas, and uh, it uh, produces a lot of missionary uh, work 
around the world, and, and it's an active participant in the Southern Baptist Convention. And so I'm proud of what the Lord led us through, and I'm glad that he gave me those experiences. It, it taught me a lot pastoring, uh, as I did for seven years. I went back into the private sector of work, and I've, I've been there since. And, uh, you know, I was a, a registered Republican. I, I wanted uh, for Republicans, conservative Republicans, to take back over uh, the Congress and the presidency. Uh, unfortunately, I thought that Bush, too, would have been um, much stronger conservative than what he actually turned out to be. And so um, <clears throat> we, uh, I, I went, I, I was a delegate to a county convention uh, in my county pre, uh, precinct and, and went there in 20, 2010, I believe is when, when uh, it would have been for. But they produced a, a resolutions committee report for us to review one minute before we were to, you know, vote on it, to pass it and everything. And right in the middle of all of that, in the middle of those eight pages, was a resolution. Uh, and what it sought to do was to protect ministers, pastors, psychologists, sociologists, psychiatrists, law enforcement, anybody that was dealing with or striving to give uh guidance and comfort to a practicing homosexual, the resolution was to be that it would be in support that uh, these different professions be allowed uh, not only to be able to do that uh, without being hindered, but at the same time that there would be no backlash of liability. Well, that's fine, but in the in the process of them putting this thing together, they you know, left out the, the pastors and the ministers and the priests uh, as being those that should be protected uh, by the law from being, uh, uh, you know, liable in any way. And so um, I tried eight different times to get just those four words added into it. And they ruled me out of order every single time, no matter what. They lied to the body at large several times, not just on this issue, but on some other issues as well. And in the process of how they were supposed to be uh, allowing it to uh, be modified. they and, and, and I saw that if it was that, if, if people at a county level were in the Republican Party and they were that uh, indignant towards the spiritual leaders uh, of our communities across the nation, then therefore I no longer wanted to be a part of that because God's Word tells us we are not to affiliate ourselves or be a part of or be stewards to those that would be involved in evil intentions. And let me give you some some in, indicators. One is is that by their own admission, both Republicans and Democrats, as you probably well know, sit on the boards of Planned Parenthood across this country. And while they may give lip service to, and may may have passed a little bill in the Senate. Uh, to try to defund Planned Parenthood, it's like I've been telling people all along. They may be trying, they may be going to defund it, but they're still on those boards, and they're they're all they're trying to do is figure out a way that they can still get their money, and that may mean that they start instilling new uh, a, a new organization to handle those those issues of abortion and things like that. That way they can still get their federal dollars uh, and their parties, you know, be be open to that. The other thing that we have to consider is in the, in the realm of same-sex marriage, they push through the Defense of Marriage Act. They made they you know they allowed it to go uh, uh, to the Supreme Court, who can cannot 
that you know they sat there and they ruled from the bench. Um, and as you know, the Supreme Court is not allowed or should never be allowed, and we the people should not allow the Supreme Court to ever just rule openly against uh, something like they can, like they have full authority to decide what's good and what's bad. They can only give an opinion. And so these types of issues are why I'm running. These are the issues that brought me to the point where I felt like I needed to be more, much more heavily involved and others around me, from my family to friends to others across the country, and some of which are in the Constitution Party, said, hey, Scott, we want you in our party, and uh, we know you want to run for president, and, and we would just like to encourage you to seek the nomination in our party. And so that's where I am now. I'm seeking the nomination of the Constitution Party. I'm giving it its, its accolades up in one side and down the other for the seven principles and because those principles are the guiding principles, I believe, uh, for our country as the, found, as the founders intended it to be in our Constitution. Okay. Well, that was a very good summary of uh, your life there and how you got to where you are today. I wanted to go through the three different platforms and then branch out a little bit from all of them into other issues that they bring up. Um, the one I, I hear all the time that we've got to, you know, take back America, and yet I never hear take back America to what? Because you could take back America to the 1950s, or you could take it to the 1910s, or the 1860s. I mean, how far back do you want to take back America? And one thing that they never discuss, or, or that I don't hear, is that America is not, um, you know, a body politic that is monolithic. And therefore, the taking back of America is going to be almost well, it would be an impossibility in my view. And you hear, here on your, you have the God plat, uh, platform, the family platform, and the country platform. And in the God platform, you say American citizens need to return to a God-centered society. How are you going to accomplish that when not all American citizens are desirous of being godly? Some churches have embraced the uh, the gender identification, same-sex marriage thing. So how do you intend to to bring American citizens to return back to a God-centered society when it really hasn't been a God-centered society for decades? Well, I think that's part of the problem is our political leaders are, are not uh, – God-centered as we are. As a matter of fact, they think that those two uh, entities of government and God are separated. But God's Word tells us that governments are ordained by, by God and God alone. And I firmly believe that our United States Constitution, its, bylaw, its Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence are all uh, God-centered um uh, uh, documents, and and I think what we have to do, uh, not just as ministers, but as Christians across the board, uh, Christians across the board need to start standing up. Uh, okay, I, I have to wrap up. Let's continue this yeah. on the other side of the break. Don't go sure. away. Away, we'll be right okay. back. Okay, I'm sorry about having to butt in there at the end of the segment. Um, 
but sometimes that happens. We were discussing, uh, we are with um, presidential candidate for the Constitution Party, Scott Copeland, and I'm glad that he is here with us so that all of you will be able to know him and the Constitution Party. We were discussing the God platform that um, the, the principles, the Christian principles, are supposed to be back in the government. And I understand where you are with that. Uh, however, the men that wrote the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence were soaked in the Bible a lot more, infinitely a lot more than people are today. And so those principles are not instilled in the people of today. Therefore, uh, I don't know that we can make them do that because they it, they don't have the spirit of God in them, and they're not going to follow those things, and they're just going to, you know, they don't care. Like, obviously, they don't. So um, I think that if Christians are going to be part of government, they need to exercise those principles. But the principles of somebody that does not have the spirit of God is almost futility because they're not going to respond. Well, that's, and, 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 and that's fine. But I believe that our God principles uh, require of us to be the shining light before the unbelievers. And even oh, yes. in, within the church, as you know, uh, there's, there's always going to be wolves. There's always going to be those that wish to deceive. And we just have to be that much more adamant and that much more bold, uh, not only in our message, but in our witness to, to the world at large. Um, you, yeah, I know you are familiar with the passage, you know, a light upon uh, a hill cannot be covered. Um, right. And, and so I, I, that's why I firmly believe we've had a, a heavy enough dose. And I, I really believe the American public at large, uh, and by at large, I'm talking, you know, 75 percent of Americans, if they went to the ConstitutionParty.com, platform and you know and they at, at the website and they read the seven principles to which we uh, uh, pronounce I know that that many of our population in America would embrace it and um, uh, you know whether people uh, want to acknowledge it or or, or what the fact is uh, about 80 percent of Americans claim to be uh, of a Christian belief. And so it is that much more important that we have to push back those in the Democratic and the Republican Party, for that matter, who stand uh, to use fear as a tool. We have to be willing to abandon those parties, and we have to be willing to be men and women of God who are willing to stand up and say to them, uh, we're not going to live in your fear-mongering of telling us that if we don't vote the way you want us to, that we'll end up with a Democratic president, for example, or we'll end up with a Senate full of Democrats. You know, I believe there's more people staying at home, not going to the polls and voting, than there are um, – uh, those that actually, you know, they're they're going to the poll, but they're going to the poll and voting, and and in their minds they're saying, and in their hearts they're saying, I'm voting for the what I think is the lesser of two evils. Well, that you don't have to, you know, vote that way at all, America. There is the Constitution Party. There are those from coast to coast in Hawaii and in Alaska that long to be. Um, in the Constitution Party, and and members of the Constitution Party will embrace you. They'll welcome you in with open arms, and and they will cherish you as not just a voter or somebody. They'll put you to work. You know, if if you want to get that active, they'll put you to work. And that's what we need is people in America that are willing to stand up and push back. Now, having said all of that, the pulpit have to be the pulpits of God. We can no longer preach the sermons of easy ideology and easy theology. We have got to insist that our pastors and our priests 
preach sinfulness and that there is a righteousness of God and that God is the ordainer of freedom and liberty for people. And that freedom can only be recognized through Jesus Christ. And so I hope and I pray that as people listen to this, that they will see that there is, even in our founding documents, God is mentioned a number of places, and and it's it's He's always active within our government, even um, whether He's drawing His hand or putting His hand against it, uh, is His decision to make and His decision to make alone. But if His people, as the Scripture says, will bow down, humble themselves before Him, and lift Him up, He will save them. He will bring them up and um, put them in place and uh, elevate them above and beyond those uh, enemies of both foreign and domestic. And uh, yes, I do believe that there are domestic people uh, within our country and within our government who wish to see it destroyed. And so um, I think we have to realize that in the realization that the duopoly party of the Republicans and Democrats, or if you want another way, I'd like to explain it to people, is they put on a good show because they're a fraternity and a sorority of the same uh, same organization. So right. this far, but the main thing is our witness. Uh, we have to be willing to be vocal about uh, the things that God has done for us personally, for our families, for our country. Okay, well, this leads me to another question. Uh, and uh, I asked um, Justin Witter last week the same question, and I'll ask you. And it has to do with the the uh, debacle, you could say, with um, the issue that Kim Davis, clerk of court in Kentucky, brought to the surface, because she's a believer, obviously, <clears throat> and yet she took an oath to support and defend the Constitution. So would you advocate people who have taken the oath to to respond in like manner like she did when it comes to uh, issuing uh, same-sex marriage licenses so those things this is, this, this is one thing that you mentioned when I was talking to you earlier this week that you depart a little bit from the na- the national constitution party platform when it comes to marriage licenses and that the government should not be involved in that at all I agree with that marriage has nothing to do with the government and I think the only reason they do it is to get money and that's it they have no other business yeah. but that well, but I think with national, Kim Davis, I think the national wait, wait, wait. I think the national party platform is quite clear. Uh, they they do not wish to see the government involved in marriage licenses either, um, and so therefore, you know, the government has no business. And I agree with you; they're just trying to get more money out of uh, uh, citizens. And um, you know, I was ordained. Uh, I mean, in Mississippi, I was I was licensed by the church before I was ordained by the church. In Mississippi, you have to be licensed and ordained. You know, in Texas, it's different. In some other ones, you just have to be licensed. So, as far as our Constitution Party goes, in our national platform, uh, I believe wholeheartedly that they will agree with me that. The line dropped. Okay. So I'm going to continue with the conversation by myself because with Kim Davis, the situation with her is that, and as I mentioned last week, was that surely she took the oath to protect and defend the Constitution, which includes the First Amendment, but does that preclude her from applying it to herself? Because she has those rights too, or or is everybody just saying, no, once you're once you're in government, you don't have those rights anymore. Uh, that's he's back. Yeah, I'm Hello? here. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So you were talking about the um, 
you know, and yeah, I, I know, well, I know for a fact the Constitution Party uh, desires uh, for the government to not be involved. They have it's not a the federal, especially the federal government has absolutely no role involving itself in marriage. The only reason that they do is based on income tax and allowing for. Um, um, uh, marriage licenses to be uh, given to them uh, has to do with the income tax at the federal level. And in a lot of states, it's not here so much in uh, Texas because we don't have a state income tax, but in a lot of other states, such as Mississippi and, and, and uh, you know some other states where they do have state income tax, they allow for deductions there as well. That's all a, a scheme in order for the governments uh, at various and different levels to, to scam money off of the citizens. Well, but even if you, even if you have to have a status of married uh, for those purposes, the actual ceremony and the actual um, formation and establishment of that family has nothing to do with government. And and so, right. why are, why are they even involved? Why are they even messing with it? And it, as a dovetail to that. I don't know why you even need to be um, ordained and licensed. Why, why do you have to be licensed to get married or licensed to preach the gospel? It's, it's like, to me, it short circuits my brain because God ordained that. <laughs> well, he allowed well, it. it. That's the end it, of it. It's, well, it's not a matter of being licensed to preach. It's a matter, especially in Southern Baptist life, uh, the licensing is, is strictly to um, – appease uh, the government's laws in a, in a lot of cases. But because uh, you don't have to be, in order to preach, uh, in most evangelicals, you, just to preach the word, you do not have to be licensed or ordained to do that. But in order to carry out marriage ceremonies, God is the one who ordained um the ministries of, of men and women in the church. And so it is by his commandment that people um, um, are married in holy matrimony. And that that's carried out by a minister, uh, you know, um, uh, it's been chosen by the people. And uh, that's where the ordination comes from. The ordination deals with the Praying of and charging the individual uh, with the responsibilities of the ministry itself. Yeah, I, well, believe, I understand about the ordination part. The, the licensing part is the one that I have trouble with. But that's yeah. okay. Maybe we can talk on that topic uh, in a private conversation because I do want sure. to continue on to the 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 family platform here that you have and um, and the country platform. In the family platform, you say eliminate abortion and preserve the uh, the unborn, unborn infant, parental choice when and what vaccines are given, parental choice of education for children, parental estates should never be taxed but preserved for the children. I like that last one. We are at the end of the second segment. I can't believe we're just rushing through this hour. <laughs> we'll be right back with... Mr. Scott Copeland uh, on the other side of the break, so don't touch that webpage, don't touch that lot. dial. We shall return. Okay, we're back with Mr. Scott Copeland, candidate for the Constitution Party for the Presidency. And uh, we were moving on from the and the last segment to your family platform, and we'd like to get to the country uh, platform. And by the way, if we don't cover everything today, we definitely have many Tuesdays before uh, election time. So, you know. Yeah, we do, we don't we? <laughs> right, right. Uh, so tell me about your family platform. Well, uh, I firmly believe in the advocacy of the unborn. Uh, not just uh, it, 
Um, back in 1983, I watched a video uh, concerning the abortion holocaust in America, and a, a, an abortion doctor videoed uh, an, an egg being fertilized. Uh, uh, and when that happened, there was this huge igniting within that egg sac. Uh, and the doctor made note that he had never seen anything like that in any other creature on Earth. And that he, you know, w once he saw that, he started looking to see if other an mammals, animals had that igniting of a firework display. And none do. That, that in and of itself, uh, he concluded was the very essence of man being sparked into existence and and it was the igniting of a human soul being born not just uh flesh but the soul of the individual and the uniqueness of mankind and so i believe that that would meet the criteria in and of itself by the supreme court in roe versus wade that if there were any other indications or changes uh, through technology uh, that would aid the court in knowing when life began, uh, I believe an internal soul meets the standard. There's, there's also uh, the Constitution Party and I uh, firmly believe in the cherishing of life from the point of conception through natural death. And, and and not just in the womb, but outside of the womb, and and so I'm a huge advocate for that. Also, uh, when it comes to vaccines, especially for the black male uh, child, between the age of of birth and three years of age, a black male is 320 percent more likely with the vaccines being given to him. Um, to develop autism, and that's, that is a study performed by the CDC of this country and has been being stifled and hid by Republicans and Democrats alike. And so there, there's another whole issue, and as more and more states develop uh, this process by which parental um, – requirement uh, and limitations and restrictions of them being able to say, no, I want to wait, or no, uh, I want to be able to pick and choose what shots my child gets and when my child gets them, because every child is different. And when each of those vaccines are developed, they're not developed, uh, I mean, they're developed independently of one another. But what they have decided to do is intermix those vaccines into, uh, like, combining three different vaccines into one shot. Well, when you do that, uh, you're intermingling things that may never have been intended to be intermingled. And, and so you have developed a different serum than what it was originally intended to be. And so I believe that with the CDC's reporting and, and the, the evidence that they provide, uh, that is one time that, this, that the government, uh, uh, in, in a massive cover-up effort, um, they, they tried to shred all the documents uh, that the doctors had, but some have started coming forth once again. And, and I believe that we, the American people, have to stand up once again against the Republicans and the Democrats and say, look, we're going to put our families first. We're not putting our politics before our families. And you're going to have to uh, start educating people on these vaccines and allowing the parents to decide. Now, is that a federal issue? No. States get to decide those things. In Mississippi, uh, a child is given over 100 vaccinations from the time they are born till the time they enter kindergarten. And the parents have absolutely no religious grounds whatsoever or any other uh, grounds that they can, whereby they can deny that. It's hard in West Virginia as well, in California and other states. It doesn't matter if they're Democrat or Republican. They have started maneuvering uh, and passing uh, legislation in order to uh, 
promote those uh, vaccines. And um, I just feel like that, you know, when I grew up, I had nine. I had nine vaccines growing up. <laughs> and and I'm fine, wow. you know. <laughs> so I believe that my children uh, and their children should be allowed that same thing. Now here in Texas, once again, Texas is is uh, allows for a religious, um, um, a religious exemption. exemption. So if a parent uh, bases that on religious exemption, then then you know, uh, or if they want to defer those some of those shots, they can. So you know, it depends on the state, and that's where it needs to be. The federal government uh, does not need to be involved in that. Right. Well, there's so many things that that you have mentioned here um, that are principles that I agree with. And yet, how to get there from here is like going through, going to Pluto without a rocket a lot of times um, with with un, unborn children. You know, how I, I've been getting phone calls from senators and representatives from Congress, oh, would you donate to overturn, you know, Roe v. Wade and stuff like that. If the court's not going to do it, I don't care how much money you're going to, you know, pile into whatever it's not going to happen, it, you know, I, and I, I'm i sorry if I sound a little bit pessimistic about these things. It's just that I don't see the United States returning to that. So the Christians then have a different role in that their role now is to establish the kingdom of God within that community of believers. And the kingdom of God is a totally different government um laws all those types of things and coming out of her you know coming out of this system that doesn't uh, want to be changed um so but anyway that is just my opinion (laughs) (laughs) well i think that most i really think that most americans are fed up with the way things are going and but by the same token they, you know, they don't know about the Constitution Party. It shows like yours and in, in, in Liberty uh, running, uh, you know, and giving us the opportunities in order to speak out and to speak up. And people listening, they need to be able to uh, find our websites at constitutionparty.com. They need to go to scottplinusa.com. And, and be open to the reality that there are those of us who wish to infiltrate our government in order to help bring about not a conservative change, but rather a constitutional renewal and revival uh, within our country. When we begin to, uh, you know, tell people, do you want conservative? people or do you want constitutional people? Do you want people that say you have the right to keep and bear your arms or you have the right to keep and bear what arms we tell you you can have and what ammo you can have? Now, a lot of people will say, oh, the Republican Party's not like that. Well, yeah, they are. They have helped and actually have endorsed the limitations of what guns and how much ammo that you can, you can acquire. And so I believe that as we push forward uh, and we we promote uh, God, we promote family, and then we report, report uh, we promote our Constitution, our Declaration of Independence, and our Bill of Rights, and we explain those issues. You know, a lot of people say to me, well, ministers aren't supposed to be in government. It's it's the power of separation. Well, that's not true. Government's not supposed to be involved in the church. Right. And so, and and a lot of people may not realize that 29 of the 52 founding fathers were ordained Mm -hmm. Christian ministers. Um, Yes. And, and you know, here, here's something that a lot of people may not realize. I was in uh, Des Moines, Iowa, and Justin Witter was there as well. Uh, we were at the Freedom 2015 conf- uh, conference with uh, several other Constitutional Party members. But I, I was allowed to get up on the platform and speak for a, for a few minutes. But um, the reason I bring that up is because Rafael Cruz was there on the first night. And th- these are his words. His words were, Christians need to begin to, to vote 
our biblical principles and not our tradition of party. Now, if he's willing to say that, knowing that he has always supported the Republican Party, and if he's willing to say that, knowing that his son is running on a Republican ticket, he was standing there telling nearly 2,000 people, hey, guess what? Republicans and Democrats are against this country and, and against the church, and it is time that we stop cuddling them and that we break ranks. And that is exactly what uh, I have done most of my life. I have always sided or tried to side on the, on the side of truth. And I believe that if we present the truth, God will honor that. He will change the hearts and minds of people across this country, and they will begin to move in mass away from um, the institutions of Republicans and Democrats. Well, I would hope so, because I, to tell you the truth, most of the things that have been stifling to liberty and freedom has, I believe, been implemented by the Republican Party. When yes. I, when I look at the... I'll, I'll say they, amen to that. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and yet we think the Republican Party is so you know, wonderful and this, that, and the other. I don't, I don't like them anymore. I used to be a Republican, uh, and I just withdrew my, my voter registration for reasons other than not liking the Republican Party. But it's, voting for these people is just not worth the effort. And I don't think that we're actually promoting our own demise by doing that. Um, well, people wanted- need to ask themselves, too, on ballot access issues. Why is it that Republicans and Democrats want to limit it to just Republicans and Democrats? Why is it that they uh, seek to keep uh, our votes, uh, uh, you know, uh, from people being in, that are involved in third parties, or is what they're called, but um, in, in, in other political societies within – you know, whether it's libertarian, greens, or, or whatever the case may be, um, and in my case, the Constitution Party, uh, people need to rise up and understand that the ballot access issues and the laws that restrict them from choice, uh, their their rights are being uh, completely, um, you know, uh, by Republicans and Democrats in the state with limiting our ballot access to those to those yes. states. And so, you know, well, we're going well, we, we, we to have to wake up America to a lot of issues. We, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to cut in again. We'll have you back on the show for sure. Thank you so much okay. for being on God the bless. show. God uh, bless. You too, and we'll get back together again, all right? Okay, take care. Okay. All right, everybody. bye-bye. Bye, everybody. We'll see you next week.